Hi there, welcome back to the European Team Championship and we are following the England team plus selected other teams. Okay, we're going to look at the women's event now and board one um, and this is Katarzyna Toma. And let's see, let's see how this game started. This is further evidence that we're doing very well for avoiding any dull games. Look, it looks incredibly complicated. Yes, it does. It looks like a very exciting game. I'm just going to click something on my other machine so I can see what's going on. Okay. Uh, if someone in the chat lets me know if you can see this, um, and otherwise we will carry on. Um, Okay, I'm just going to refresh. Okay, and this is an English opening. Um, it's um, Slovenia one, isn't it? Thanks. Thank you. Against this England. is Slovenia. Yeah, we're playing the hosts. So when you beat the hosts, hosts yeah, it always makes you very unpopular. And you. Ah, uh, hi, Twitchy column. Thanks for that. Thanks. Okay, uh, right. So English opening. I have to say, Slovenia is probably one of my favourite countries. I'm quite envious of them all being in Slovenia. To visit, yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. it's really nice. I mean, okay, I'm sort of a little bit biased because I've been to Lake Bled two or three times, which is absolutely okay. Lovely. But, but um, the country is... I've been in Ljubljana a few times as well. Ah. I, I, I seem to remember... I think demolished is an exaggeration for any of the games I played in Hull, but thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is White's playing some kind of very direct Botvinnik system in the English, where you play c4 and e4 and try and get a really, really firm grip on d5 at the expense of Black getting some fun on the d4 square in return, probably. And, you know, both sides are likely to de develop in a way which leave plenty of pawn breaks, maybe f4 or f5 or on the queen side, b4 for white, that kind of thing. There are many different ways to play this. Mm. I must admit, again, this is not, you know, we've had a couple of games which were more my more my field of knowledge. This is something I've always tried not to pay too much attention to, although I think there's a very, yeah. there's, a, there's a chessable course with um, Simon Williams and Richard Palliser. Okay. I'm not sure how, how the division of labour went. I think Richard Palliser had something to do with it. I'm pretty sure Simon Williams is heavily involved. This is the, the Iron English, is it? Yeah, that's right. This yeah. is this is the sort of stuff that Botvinnik used to play or that Botvinnik originally kind of came up with this mm. whole setup for white and and yeah, it's it's quite a it's quite strategically complicated and challenging, I think. And it will be interesting. Yeah, so as I say, B4 is on the cards for white at some point, F4 as well, black for black, F5 is an obvious pawn break to aim for, and there's lots to be done. And yeah, the in goes the knight to D4 already. I mean, it's always questionable wh whether you want to just control these squares or actually occupy them when the piece can be challenged, but we will see whether she can make a good case for playing it in there so early. Mm. I suspect it means that, you know, black... Maybe this is slightly flattering to White's setup, but Black may have aspirations to support that knight with c5 herself. Or the, another reason to do it might be to, you know, try and play c6 for Black and then say that exactly. all this, yeah, she all this white to. attention on d5 yeah. is a little misplaced. Yeah. Any of those could be interesting. So b4, okay. Knight e7. So Black's trying to get f5 in, I think. Oh no, but she actually goes for goes for your plan. Well, I think Black has. Op well, I'm, I'm not sure I want C5 to be my move because I think if she was left <laughs> alone, that C6 might be a good, you know, a good mm. way to handle Black's position. But I think Knight C2 is an attempt to take C6 a little, no, slightly take C6 off the table in order to play with C6. Now Black would have to do something with the D4 Knight first. Yeah. And, you know, knight takes e2 followed by c6 seems to me a not ridiculous way to play the position. And maybe even you might even be able to make a case for knight e6 takes, and then c6. Takes here, something like that. You know, the point of c6 is is clearly just to say, OK, you've gone c5, uh, c4 and e4, but you've done so before there's really a d5 square to work with and I'm going to challenge you for it. But okay, so this looks perfectly plausible for black to me as well. Mm. I quite like 
the way the opening stages have gone but c5 well that sort of that says the opposite thing that that's you know c6 would be sort of mildly insulting to white setup whereas c5 seems quite flattering to it but mm. uh, i guess you can take your take your own view on but of course the fact that knight takes c takes changes the structure yet again you know it makes now it makes f4 look a very attractive idea for white and f5 a very attractive idea for black so yeah. all kinds of strategic complexity and white came up with yet another angle on it all. another h4 another h4 is so, yeah. well this is this is your um your is alpha alpha zero, well, isn't it? Yeah, before we wrote the book right or while we were writing it i was doing all these things i was doing all these h4s just to try it out yeah exactly um, How did it but go? Actually, sometimes <laughs> it worked and sometimes it, well, it didn't because it does depend oh, obviously it does depend on the position but these ones are with a so this like having a closed center is one important thing about it yeah, Which I mean, was thinking the other day about all the H4s happening at the moment because Magnus's yes. Magnus's attack against Duda was so sort of extreme that it brought to mind a few mm -hmm. other H. And then I found this other game with an incredibly quick H4, really sharp stuff, and you just mm -hmm. see it all over the place at the moment. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. Alpha Zero is having an impact. Definitely, yeah, because it's pretty much all the games we've seen today have had it in. Yeah, one H4 second. here's a funny one because you know if if Black well, I mean, h4 makes a subsequent f4 by white less attractive in yeah. some cases, but it also, once black's moved his h1, her h1, sorry, then I suppose the same applies to to her as well, although if it goes to h6, not so much so. You can imagine black playing h6 followed by f5 and, and saying, yeah. okay, h6 didn't do much harm, but if if she had to play h5, then, you know, any subsequent f4 or f5 is less attractive than it would have been otherwise, I suppose. Mm. Just in terms yeah, of... Yeah, but she's not. She's just going h6. So h6 and, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And then white carried on anyway, and... h5. And so... Which b6. I mean, how to explain this? I suppose that black is keen to get f5, and after e takes f5, she wants to take back with the pawn which is kind of in some ways the most dynamic way of doing it. And so to, because of that, she's very reluctant to move the g-pawn to g5. Yeah, I would have been looking at g5. However, it's not right. obvious to me that g5 isn't a sensible move. Although after g5, white could also look at an immediate f4. Yeah. Because you know, although black can take twice, in that sort of position, you would want then to be able to play something like knight g6 to control the e5 square. But it's covered. <laughs> so Yeah, so you'd have to go around via... We'd have to go via C6, C6 or something. But, less. yeah. And anyway, I mean, when Black's taken... If Black if Black played G5 and then took twice on F4, Black's paying a reasonably high price in terms of, you know, there's doubled isolated d pawns then it, with, an e, with a strong E5 square. It's not that clear to me how weak they are. But, you know, there's a lot... Positionally, there's so much going on here. It's difficult to... Mm. And I guess this kind of system appeals to people who like this sort of massive strategic complexity, which is very interesting. I mean, you know, if you if you get good at it, it's very it gives you a, an obvious edge because many people are not very good at looking yeah. at so many strategic things all at once. So you can see the appeal of the system if you can kind of ha get a handle on these things. I, I understand why Black might not want to play G5, but I'm not convinced that it wouldn't have been a good idea anyway. If you like. Yeah, I mean, I suppose she could still play it later. She could still play it if White doesn't take on G6 herself. Yes. Um, but that's obviously a question. You know, if White does, then you've missed your moment. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, that's, you know, it's not, doesn't look disastrous. Okay, so Bishop E6. And yeah, so I guess a, a choice for White here would be just to take here. Yeah. And by the way, the position is complicated enough. It's not obvious to me here how black would necessarily take back either. Probably with the pawn. I think if you take back with the knight, there's a danger that you may never get in f5, and then the f5 square will be quite weak. So after knight takes, as white, I'd even look at a move like queen h5 just to block the h pawn. And black doesn't really have a piece that could evict that queen. Yep. That seems kind of appealing. And then if queen d7, then maybe you go bishop h3 to hold back f5 and try and put your bishop on f5, something like that. Just yeah. So, okay, so, you know, yeah. You know, obvious takes, chess yeah. questions like where is each side going to put their king <laughs> seem to sort of yes. kind of almost be on hold here. I have no idea where anyone's going to put their king, really. <laughs> it's an incredibly interesting position. And I imagine that, 
you know, whatever the end. I kind of feel like they're going king side. Both sides, but I could it be might wrong. be, but I certainly but you can't now because the H six pawn's on. Particularly have that intent. Uh, it doesn't seem that obvious. I mean, Black would need to play some preparatory moves to Castle Kingside for sure. Mm. You know, there's other. I mean, Black could look at some playing something like Queen D seven, even possibly eyeing up the chance to play B five herself here. I mean, there's so many different ways, so many different pawn breaks on both sides. It's very, very difficult to mm. get a handle on all the possibilities. But okay, it's also interesting that White chose not to take on. Yeah, so as both sides are, I suppose, keeping tension there in the position, or White is certainly that. Well, I suppose Black's never going to go. G yeah, they're definitely keeping tension. It's just a question. I'm not sure that that's a good idea. Of, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. It's very hard to say. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is. I mean, maybe now. I mean, Bishop H3 doesn't stop Black playing G5, but it certainly kind of discourages it in the sense that an exchange of those bishops. I don't know. I'm not even sure that's true because, you know, if White takes on e6, if Black played g5, for example, yeah, in the coming few moves, if White then took on e6, you kind of feel like the f file could be something of an issue. So here takes takes. Well, I don't know exactly. Yeah, and we're back to this thing with doubled pawns, and it does control a lot of squares. He goes, they do, yeah, and they might support a d5 pawn break. But on the other hand, that bishop on g7 might be awful. Yeah, and it might, you know, it's difficult. It's not just difficult to. Find a pawn. You need two or three pawn breaks to bring that one to life. <laughs> Maybe it will never happen. And you know, if White can consolidate the king side, who knows? I mean, it's just an extraordinarily complicated position. Mm. Okay, so uh, Bishop H three. So Queen D seven. Okay. Yeah, cut to play Queen D seven. So she quite understand. I mean, she wanted to take back with the queen, and I think that's kind of understandable, at least from the sense of. It seems less less unlikely that the bishop on g7 might find some way of getting back into the action after after queen takes e6. Yes, yeah, so it takes takes bishop d2. Yeah. Again, that's not at all obvious. I mean, that was a square I quite wanted to. That was a square in some lines I found myself considering for White's knight rather than the bishop. You know, because when you've played, if, if there's some lines with an open f-file or something, you might want to put the knight on f3 and then quickly get it off f3 to control some squares. So d2 was sometimes seemed like a decent square for the knight. Now this gives Black a chance to play f5, which is pretty tempting, isn't it? Which she does. Which she does. And I think that's right, because, you know, now f takes g6 has become less relevant, I think. Yeah. Sorry, H6, yeah, yeah. H6, H6. H6. You just... And obviously, Black's threatening to take on e4 and also then take on c4. So, okay, there may be some conversation in some cases, but in general, that feels like a fairly serious idea. I assume Queen a4 check isn't to move. I think Black's quite happy to move her king. Queen a4 check. I think, you know, King f7 okay. or something wouldn't be. Oh, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. It doesn't feel like that's. Are very dangerous. It doesn't feel like there's anything to back up Queen A4 check, really. Yeah. Um, but you know that would enable White to take on G6 with check. So at that point, Black has to take that back before you know doesn't have yeah, to take C4. Take answer. Answer. So maybe yeah. King F8 was a better move. But I, I think Queen A4 check is not a big issue. So White's trying to hold the E4 square, but my feeling is that she shouldn't have a very joyous time trying to hold <laughs> the E4 square. I don't know. So, okay, so Queen E2 defending. And now, and whether, now... Or, whether or not G5 is the best move, it's a hugely understandable and looks very sensible move to me. Yeah. Why yeah, give White those now, extra possibilities now that you've already got your F5 in? It doesn't seem necessary to give White any counterplay. Okay, the bishop on G7 isn't currently the most beautiful, but Black has a lot of active play here. And, you know, D takes E4 at the right moment, you'll end up, after pawn takes, you can then attack C4, probably pretty directly with rook C8s and maybe even undermine with B5 if white's badly developed. Mm. And if white takes with the queen, you're always going to have a D5 break. And I just think, I just rather like black's position here, I think. Yeah. And um, black's also threatening F4. Well, maybe. Do you think that's a threat? I mean, I'm not sure. She, well, I think she should be trying to open the position because if you play a four and white play G4, it's going to be hard to break um, it open again. I mean, she, you know, both sides, 
both sides have slightly ugly positions then but okay black still has this b5 pawn break but we've kind of I, if i was white i'd be more worried about the f file and the center being opened i think mm. I, mean, I still see what you mean it's it's you know white doesn't have any obvious plans after f4 either but i kind of think that I'd be more, I, I'm more worried as white that I don't have a good answer to a timely F takes E4. I F takes think. E4, yeah. Yeah, I think okay. so. F4, you know, I mean, the bishop, on G7, the bishop on G7 isn't going to vote for F4, is it? It's going to say. No, that's yeah, true, right. actually. <laughs> that's true. And white now played F4. Oh, wow. Well, that so changes it, everything. Yes. And again, you can sort of see why she did. It's there's an understandable element to that because you want to have some, you want to kind of complicate before Black can simply implement one of the plans we were discussing before. There's so many moves now. I don't really know where to start. I mean, well, Black could. I'm looking at things like e takes f4 and f takes e4 for Black, and just opening up the centre. Well, yes. Let's start that, with one of them. So that would certainly be one you would look at, yeah. G takes F5. Okay, so I think white has to play G takes, because E takes F5 really doesn't help. It brings... I mean, black can play without queens, but positionally that's... I mean, specifically after E takes F5, black may be able to take back on F5, but black could also play queen takes E2. Knight takes... Hang on a minute, I'm about to make a positional point, which is tactically unsound, but we can play... Okay. F3 here, and then knight takes F5, I think. F3. F3. Ah, F3, and if knight G1, we just go... Oh, we don't go G4 because rook H4 would win it. That's slightly bizarre. It's complicated, this position. I find the it? position <laughs> incredibly complicated. It's not the easiest position to commentate on I've ever seen. It's really... There's so many possibilities for both sides. I'm starting to see a little more the appeal of the opening, actually, because if you get positions this complex, mm. there's something quite nice about that. OK, but I'm pretty sure that all this works quite reasonably well for black. I think black white should probably take back on F4 with the pawn instead. I'm not sure. At least that's the move I'd analyze. That's the move I'd analyze mm. first, probably, unless but unless there was some massive breakthrough now. But the thing is, although you can play, you can play f takes and after queen takes, you could, for example, take and go d3. You've opened the diagonal for the bishop, but I don't actually think you've achieved anything that concrete by doing that. So takes. Maybe you no no not pawn takes. You do you achieve winning a rook. Which oh, is there you are. You win the yeah. That is not a good thing. But you have to go queen takes, queen takes so that it doesn't win a rook. And then it's not so obvious to me that I mean I, I sort of still quite like black, but I don't think this doesn't feel like it should be the simplest way of handling it but maybe instead of f takes e4 once you've got g takes f4 on the board do we have a quiet move that just works i don't know it's one of the hardest things i think in chess knowing when to keep the tension and when to sort of mm. make these particularly with such a complex structure when to make these decisions it's... i was thinking I was thinking rook c8 to then be able to take on e4, yeah. but our g pawns on priest. Yeah, it bothers me a little bit that white can take on g5, I think. I mean, I think we're only one move away from sort of g4 being positionally quite good, but at the moment I think the g4 pawn becomes vulnerable before we can get any kind of... Anyway, it's not... No, that's not... I think maybe he takes f4, isn't isn't the thing. So to, no, I don't know. It's very hard to say. Hmm. That's quite hard to believe. I mean, G4 mm -hmm. is also... Not at all silly, is it? Mm. Well, G four is what she played. I know. Yeah. I'm just, oh, okay. No, we. I mean, we need to move on. We've got other games to see as well. We should. It's beautifully complicated. Mm. Yeah. Rook H four is very single-minded. <laughs> it says 
you know, I think your G-pawn's yeah. weak. And he I'm wants to take the G-pawn. Willing to sort of make my position look quite ugly. To, what would be t so terrible about taking a timeout with bishop f6 here? Then the z takes f5. Okay, that's the idea. And that wins the g-pawn. Here and this one. Yeah, e takes f5 just wins the g-pawn. Bishop f6 is actually a mistake, I think. I mean, you know, if you could play queen takes, rook takes g4, and then that rook were somehow so awkward that you could just play around it. And But I don't think... I mean, I think it's a pretty silly-looking rook, but I don't think yes. it's so silly that it's going to win the game. No. Um, I mean, it can't move, but, well, there's more to life. <laughs> mm. More to life than moving for a rook. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that's interesting, but not probably the right way for black. Um, after rook h4, does black have some... What, what's the way to do this? I mean, I'm. Hmm. Is it possible that something like f takes e4 kind of works tactically? I don't know. So I was wondering, for example, if pawn takes, then I would play. Oh, I might even play something with d3 follow, e6, e6, f4, followed by d3. I don't know. It's difficult to get it in yeah. there with d4 always being. Well, take bishop, there form. might be bishop f6, mm -hmm. rook takes, and then d3 now. I don't know. Some some mixture of these things must be interesting yeah. for black, I would think. White's position field. I don't think d takes e4 is probably the move, but. I was just thinking that if we can deflect the queen with queen takes, then maybe bishop f6 is a good moment for going chasing that rook. Yeah. Not sure. But, you know, f takes e4 when you can't then demolish the rest of white's position isn't necessarily the right way to go anyway. But, okay, so black played... So black played it. E takes e F4. F4, and then the engine really didn't like that. Which, and it does look, on the face of it, like Katarzyna might have re sort of underestimated E takes F5 here. Because suddenly, you know, if you can make black uh, go Ravi, yes, hi blue, go blue, blue cow. If you can make black take on. Um, e2 or something then suddenly your knight hops back into the game quite neatly doesn't it yeah and yeah i'm sure that there's a missed opportunity for black somewhere here but i'm sort of full of sympathy for her because it's not very obvious what it is no, it's i mean making the rook awkward feels better than e takes f4 but i'm i feel like there ought to be something better again maybe f takes e4 was a decent move but mm. you know again all these moves you can see the downside and you can see why she might have been put off them yeah okay uh, this so one it's... is awkward though because now suddenly the pins and the, you know the tension between the queens is kind of working in white's favor whereas before it seemed to be working yeah. more in black's favor the queens are coming off and then yeah and black now will, the and rook is gonna now is getting into the game activate and black's pawns have kind of fallen apart a bit that all happened very quickly because it you know her error was hmm. i think it you know we can see why it was a mistake but it's not so obvious a what else she should have done i'm sure there were better but it's not the choices weren't easy but no. also the speed with which this deteriorates now you know f3 looks a bit over ambitious but Suddenly, after knight f4, it could be that black is in real, real trouble. You know, white's rook could easily have been in G on g4 slightly, uh, you know, vulnerable or out of the play, but suddenly it's very well placed. Yeah. And the knight on g1, which was, you know, really out of the play, is suddenly going to its optimal squares. Most annoying from the point of view of white's opening is that she's managed to make sense of 
you know, she's managed to get to that D5 square she was targeting right at the start. So, yeah. 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 It's a bit. Okay. Disappointing in terms of what could have been, I think. Because mm. she handled the early part of the opening so well, you kind of felt yes. there was going to be some fun. Oh, yeah. let, let's not break the oh. um, transmission now that now that we've been bid hello again by the same person. Who just, oh, hello. I'll say like said hello. We just win. We'll try not yeah. to do that again. Yeah. Okay. Right, let's uh, have a look at some of the other Let's see things. Louise. Yes. Okay, I'm just going to flip it around so we've got white for Louise. Ugh. Here we right, go. Another, another position which, whatever else it is, doesn't look dull, does it? So these are all not E4 games. So all the open games we saw are E4. That's really interesting. They're yes. not. I don't think we can read anything into it. I think it's just uh, just the way it's happened because I've, I've seen other days where it's the other way around. Um, I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna have some fun reading something into it, even if it wasn't. No, I'm not. I, I, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not at all. Uh, C five. Ah, the, uh -huh. the Blumenfeld Gambit. This um, this got has been played at quite high levels. Not not exactly frequently, but it's had revivals at odd times. I remember. Um, Romanian grandmaster, quite sharp grandmaster, Nisi Pianu played this for oh, a while. Oh, yes, yes. And, and you know, it's if white yeah, accepts yeah, the pawn sacrifice with D takes E6, F takes, and then takes on B5, black plays D5 and simply plays in the center. And it sort of looks at first a bit unlikely that there should be full compensation. And there's probably not. I mean, I think taking the pawn is a valid option, but it's, um, the black gets some fun. Bishop mm. G5, I think, is a very sensible move. But I remember getting um, thinking that, you know, this line sold, solved most of White's issues and then being caught by a tricky move order by Jack Rudd one time. Oh, like, really? Yeah, some line where I think it was, I can't remember if it was E takes F5 or not. It was something where black played an early D6 and Bishop E7 and then, ah, okay. Malcolm wrote a book on the Blumenfeld Gambit. I'd forgotten that. Okay, if I ever knew, oh. I must have known at the time. Okay, okay. Queen C two. No, possibly not a coincidence. Interesting. So yeah, this is this is one of the sort of fairly positional lines for white. Where you okay, you give the bishop pair, and then despite the fact you've given the bishop pair, you weaken the white squares by going e four. But you have quite a lot of, you know, quite a lot of dynamic compensation. If black if black, if black played something with sort of a six and then allowed allowed white to play a four such that black had to play b four or something white gets yeah. a tremendous bind on the white squares you know oh, you, get the dark square, you get wonderful white square so I think it's really important for black to try to make c four work and emphasize the colored squares where he has well, sorry she in this case has the advantage yeah. because you know I think yeah I think when you've got that extra bishop on f eight. <laughs> it's one of those moments of realization. <laughs> ah, yes, English Chess Federation. Yes, that's indeed. Right. That's, who, <laughs> that's who it is. Um, one of those moments where, yeah, you need to use that extra bishop. Ah, European Champions. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. yes. No, it's well, just John Spielman thought it was something German when I and I logged on to his his um, Twitch on time and and his ECF commentary. He thought it was a German, a German word. <laughs> okay. I guess yes. I guess it was a time when the ECF never used to organise any commentary. Yes, so it's mm. a revolutionary concept. Um, okay. Yeah, so I kind of like the motivation of C four, trying to activate you know the bishop, which you've gone to the trouble of winning. Bishop B four, check, logical. Yeah, and knight C three. Castles and Bishop E2. Yeah. So I mean, this this all looks incredibly sensible. Yeah. And then, you know, what should happen here? I think Black should play D6 yeah. and defend the B port. And at some point, there will be a battle between whether Black's Queen's. Well, well actually, it's not going to be. I think it's going to be difficult to get Black's Queenside pawns moving. It will be more a question of whether White can target them. And Black, in the meantime, tries to get some pressure on White's center. Black's next move, I 
totally don't understand. A5. I find it difficult to even understand what she's after. I mean, maybe she wants to play defend the b-pawn with bishop a6, but it looks to me like white's going to be very strong in the centre in that case. Uh, yeah. um, you know, if, if ever black has to take on c3 in order to kind of stem white's pressure in the centre, what would worry me now for black is that the b5 pawn is going to be quite open to attack. So whenever you take on c3, it's going to give us an extra square for the knight on d4, and then we can kind of put a knight there and then gang up on the b-pawn somehow. So, but okay, I mean, if black can make it work with bishop a6, then it's a better way of getting the pawns rolling, I suppose, than playing a6. But I was just looking now at e5 for white. You are, I yes. think this might be overextending the center there. Well, it might be. Where's the queen going to go? Well, that's that's the thing. So let's have a look. So e5. So queen. I suppose you'd go backwards, right? So maybe to um, e7 or even d8. Well, I suppose if e7, you always have to. I mean, it doesn't seem to be White's plan A, but you do have to reckon with the possibility that d6 might be a further annoying mm. sort of wedge. Um, d8 therefore looks more. I mean, she could swing to a6 thanks to a5, but it seems. Oh, a bit I hard. suppose maybe that's the point. Yeah. Seems rather doubtful that that was the plan. Maybe it was. Uh, let's try queen d8. Then I think just castles, just to. Yeah. And now I think, from if I were black here, I would regard. I mean, okay, knight takes b5 is clearly a threat, but I think I would regard other knight moves as a threat, like knight e4 or something. I'd then be quite worried that the bishop on b4 is going to run out of squares. Yeah. You know, you're threatening knight e4. You might, and after knight e4, I mean, a4 is probably a threat, but a3 and d6 is you a threat. Go as a3, well. can't you? Yeah, That's yeah. That's a very nasty threat. So I think this just, I don't know. I guess black has to take on c3 and then try to show that. The d5 pawn is going to miss the cover of the knight. No, I don't know. I, uh, I mean, I quite, you know, some people would be worried about the overextension. I quite like white space, mm. um, and I think that's one of the reasons I liked most of the positions in the bishop g5 Blumenfeld because white tends to do okay for space in those lines. Yeah. Okay. So I think e5, I think e5 is definitely tempting, and I don't. Yeah. Like what black had in mind. Okay. So Louise went castles, first of all. Yeah, and it must be said that here too, black isn't then preventing e5. Black yeah, yeah, I think e, yeah, e5 you can still do. So So if she played bishop a6, I, we can assume that, well, no, we can't assume for sure that the queen wasn't otherwise headed there. But, mm -hmm. you know, here too, e5 followed by knight e4 looks pretty tempting to me. Yeah. As a the fact that e5 comes with tempo and enables us to play knight e4, now it feels really tempting. I mean, let's just see yeah. if the... Five like that. If we're, you know, there's some decent way to defend this. Yeah. So again, the queen would have to. Well, if it goes back to d8, I'm tempted then, like I said just before, to play knight e4. And I think that's a bit awkward for black. Yeah. We're threatening a3 and d6. We might be threatening d6 followed by a3. There might be some, you know, scary kingside attacks going on as well. I'm almost wondering whether black has to try and play the position without queens and go queen g6, but it looks pretty ugly to me. Could be could be what she was going to do, right? Uh, so I, the other thing I suppose... Queen g6. Don't like it, I must say. Takes. I suppose it doesn't stop ninety four either, does it? But I, I suspect we maybe take. And again, I like the idea of trying to chase the bishop rather than allowing bishop takes c three. But I mean, I don't much care for black's position anyway because the knight on b eight isn't going anywhere fast either. Mm. The only downside will be if those center pawns are weaker than they look. You're right. This knight on v8, actually, now you say it, because if you can't go to c6, the bishop's already just gone to a6. Yes. And that's the other square. And then if you move this pawn forward, white just goes e6 and blocks off anywhere it can go. So After knight e4, it looks to me like white's having most of the fun. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, right. there might be a move, there might be a move like rook f4 that's a bit mild. Rook d1. 
D6. Um, okay, so D6. she's put a stop to E5. I kind of, yeah. I, I mean, it may or may not be right to go E5, but I would have been very tempted. Uh, yeah, I think I would. And you would have too, by the sound yeah. of it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, you see, this interesting because I think she partly wants to go F4. And you kind of feel after F4, the plan is to go E5 anyway. So there might have been a case for just getting on with it. Yeah. But, okay, but I also like the move knight d4 and it attacks b5 again. And if it forces bishop takes c3. Yeah, that's... and still that is still the same point about that knight because it could go to d7, but um, then, then our knight's got like... Well, our knight's going to c6, which is quite yeah. crunchy, isn't it? So takes, takes, knight d7, and Louise plays f4. I think if it goes to c6 straight away, maybe bishop b7 is a good idea because it defends a5 and maybe threatens to take it off sometimes. Yeah. I, I like f4 first. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Rook f8. Ah, so what's black got to offer if white just goes knight c6 now? Oh, that's what she did. Okay. That's what she did. Um, knight c6. Yeah. And so now I think that if bishop b7 can't white can white again play e5 straight away because the rook will hit the queen after takes takes and so bishop b7 here e5 but white's got to be careful not to overextend because pawn takes pawn takes queen g5 then white actually needs I guess to have some follow up you know it looks like we're blasting our way through the center but actually maybe we're just activating black's counter chances as well. Mm. Not sure. Can you pop that on? I'm curious whether there's a yeah, follow up there because you know Black's Queen could also be like that, in danger. Yeah. But if she finds a good Queen G5, Queen G5. Yeah, I think this might be giving Black unnecessary counterplay. In fact, yeah. it's interesting. Black's position actually suddenly looks a bit more coherent after that, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm trying to work out how to get if I wanted to keep attacking. What does that like rook f5? Yes, exactly. And then I, okay, if I go queen g, oh, queen g6, you have bishop h5, yeah, but queen e3 check is annoying, I think. Queen three, yeah. If there wasn't queen e3 check, then yes, maybe that would have been quite scary for black because she's queen's running out of good squares otherwise. Yeah? Mm. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm wondering whether the whole e5 thing actually is in danger of activating black's pieces and that at least what the engine was more worried about was some timely a4 because that, the queen's oh, side pawns might okay. just sort of collapse just a kind of a4 here possibly ah yes perhaps yes but there could also i mean there could also be some no i don't know that looks reasonable I sort of overall quite like White's position, but I can see that you know Black has one big square in return, which is Knight C five. And if the you know if if for example the wrong exchange has happened, if the Bishop could take the Knight in circumstances where Black could then go Knight C five and the C pawn wasn't dangerous, mm. and see how things could turn around a bit. But I hope that this, anyway Black played Queen G six, which doesn't look to me as that's good. I, I think Bishop B7 off asks more questions. Bishop F3, okay. But the E pawn is now pinned, so E5's off the table for a bit. Oh, yeah. It's about played knight to C5, hmm. ganging up on this pawn. Okay, and Louise took on A5. Oh, well, I didn't even notice what she could take. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> Okay, but that's an odd. I mean, that's an odd exchange. If knight takes e4 doesn't have any tactical drawbacks, I think, as a sort of pure exchange of pawns, we probably don't want that to happen. A because the e4 pawns are more important than central pawn, but also because a5 sort of looked a little bit weak anyway, and you kind of yeah. wonder, if, or you feel like black ought to have to make some contorted defence to defend it properly, but. Okay. So do you think something like rook just defending? Well, I e don't know. I mean, there's now a d3 square as well. I think I'm not very... F I don't think I was so keen on White's last couple of moves. Bishop f3 does weaken d3 a bit, doesn't it? So mm. I don't know. But taking on a5 doesn't feel like the best thing. Although, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure about any of this because the knight can hop back to c6 and actually there could be scenarios where the open e-file offers White some 
extra yeah. chances. And... Now, Louise really is quite short on time. She's got four and a half minutes. Oh, um, yeah, I kind of felt that positionally you may not want this exchange, but tactically there may be some extra possibilities. So, yeah. you know, sort of rookie one and knight c6 in combination may force black to play some moves that she doesn't want to play. <laughs> But it's Louis complicated. Gets her knight back. Yes, I wonder whether I wonder whether um, rook, oh no, rookie one doesn't really help because the rook on a eight e eight is defended anyway. So yes, that's probably sensible. That looks plausible, doesn't it? Knight yeah. c five. Okay. Yeah, now she's rejecting the exchange of queens, but giving away a lot of dark squares in the process and. After f5, queen g5, I think, you know, that's it's gone from being a queen you might reject exchanging off to one you'd probably be happy to exchange off. So it's funny, I mean, you're, you're sort of preventing the exchange of queens yeah. with a move that improves your opponent's queen so yeah, much, yeah. but then Absolutely. retrospectively you wish you had kind of thing. This, yeah. I don't know, I, this, this wasn't necessarily the kind of exchange I had hoped for initially, but what's the best way to do this now? I wonder if this makes no, no no I need to think a bit here. So perhaps we should play rookie one. And if, mm, there is knight d three. I was looking at whether rook e six was then a good move because I want to open up, you know, the line for the bishop again and yeah. stuff like that. And also attack the D pawn. Yeah. Um I don't know. It's it's positionally quite complicated now. I'm not entirely sure what to think of it. I also just wondering if White has some ideas like playing f5 here to meet g takes with check, and then when you take back on f5, you're hitting the d6 pawn again. I want to try and attack that d6 pawn somehow. But Black has a move, of course. I'm not quite sure what Black should do with her move. Mm -hmm. Again, Bishop b7 makes some sense to me because I'm I'm not always confident that i'm happy to have that knight exchanged off it's very tricky tricky mm -hmm. to judge this one okay and so louise but f5 feels wrong i like black yeah, queen yeah. after queen g5 and so f5 yeah queen g5 and now black's queen's looking quite threatening well it's sort of funny because if you could avoid that exchange of queens without allowing queen g5 then you might but i think given that yeah. it allows it you'd probably rather not yeah, I see. And now it's, yeah, knight d4 really looks like knight white's d4. running backwards a little bit. Okay, and that's where they're at. So, that's um, where they're at, but yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Louise, a bit behind on the clock. The opponent, though, has spent four minutes on this move, so it's it's getting a bit more level in terms of time. I guess some mix um, of knight, the knight d3 and queen e3 checks sort of worth examining, although maybe that leads nowhere. Black should probably... Think about it more positionally than that. Yeah, it does feel like this has turned around a little bit, though, I fear. Mm. Uh, especially with the time situation. it's Yeah. Little, although, you know, Black doesn't have oodles of time either, so... No, it's true. Um, okay, interesting. Right. Still, let's uh, check. Um, let's then check. we should return, because we're actually facing... Maria. Yeah, we have, we've, got a, we've got a few... Oh, Maria's drawn. Oh, Maria's okay. drawn. Okay. Let's have a quick look. Fine. Fantastic. Um, all right. That's okay. that's that. Did you want to? Like the King's we... Indian. It looks. It looks. Uh... King's well, Indian. Well, according to the engine, she's she's agreed to draw in a rather good position, but I don't know how true or obvious that is. Ah, uh, let's let's flip it so then it will. Come I mean, break. if it's true, if it's true, it must be a claim that the H pawn is basically a lot weaker than the F pawn or something, and that. So now, why is this so good for black, according to the engine? How are we in terms of material? In terms of pawn material, up. we are... We're a pawn up. Are we? Aren't we? We have seven. Oh, wow, we're a pawn up. Oh, gosh, I didn't even notice that. Okay, that's <laughs> that makes sense. Makes sense as to why the engine prefers black so much, because... Yes. That is an extra pawn. Okay, we can't play a five, which we... Might it feels do like a bit of pressure there. I, can't, I mean, I don't. I would. Yeah. Well, I just wonder whether we can play sort of. Mm, not clear. Mm. 
I mean, you, in an ideal world, you might want to play something like sort of f6, rook f7, and then queen f8, try and attack the h pawn without ceding anything in regards to the f pawn. Yeah. I think what worries me for white is that it's quite difficult to add to the pressure. Because, you know, the a pawn is nicely preventing that knight from being dislodged at any point. So I, I think black can take a few liberties with her king in order to... I mean, you know, it's not going to be suddenly attacked on the queen side if she starts devoting time to the king side. I think black probably does have quite a big advantage here, but I can see why it sort of feels a bit nervous. Well, it might not well. be obvious, yeah. Although, you know, it would might have been nice if she'd continued given that... I th well, it may be, it's not even clear that at the moment she agreed the draw that mm. things, things might have been looking a lot rosier on the other boards than they are now, if you see. It's very yes. tricky in team. You some, Sometimes in team games, obviously, you make decisions about draw agreements and things. Yeah, and indeed, I don't know how it's set up. Do you team. know, Peter, how it's set up at the moment? Because I know in the old days, you used to always ask your captain about whether a draw was good well, for the team, and you, you're probably not allowed to. Do do. People don't, don't always, but yes, they do quite often. You can still yeah. the cap, well, it's a very artificial situation because the captain is supposed to only reply in terms of the match situation, not mm. the position on the board. But I mean, almost all the captains are pretty au fait with what's going on on the board as well, at least in terms, you know, sure. not all of them may be as strong as the players to understand it, but they. Yeah have a pretty fair grasp of it. And they obviously are answering a question, having been watching the games. Yeah. So that it's, well, We've got it's, Lauren, of course, who is who's very, yeah, very good. Yeah, we've got Lauren, who's yeah. very capable of uh, making a decision based on the position on the board as well. Um, I, you know, it's tricky, but in a situation like this, you sometimes make a decision based on the match situation, and then the match situation can, yeah, can turn can, around alarmingly yeah. quickly. As I mean, both the games we saw... Yeah, our players were doing pretty well until some point where they suddenly weren't. No, so you can true. see how, from a team point of view, it's not the, easy. Not easy. The retrospectively, to... wrong advice might have been given, but it would have looked very reasonable at the time. Also, I mean, I, I really, I liked Zoe's position a lot early on, but it seems to have gone very. I wrong think early. we're we're white here, aren't we? Yes, we are, and it's clearly gone. It's gone wrong. Quite badly wrong, I think. A quick flick through an E4 game, yes. Oh, this thing is quite fashionable, but yes, um, this may well be back. I don't know to what extent working with Danny has impacted on Zoe's openings, but. I she knows her openings pretty well. I I've think. seen some quite impressive openings for her in yeah. recent times. Yeah, and that may well have been true before as well. Well, she was telling us all about the chessable uh, lines the she other was, day, which I was, must admit I was, was, uh, was sort of stuff. embarrassingly yeah. ignorant of most. Mm -hmm. of them. So, yeah. Oh, Louise has found a great move. Can we just flip back? Yeah, to let's it? flick and see a great move. I'd like to see a great move. Yes, thanks, Wilson. Yeah. I mean, the thing about that position, we, we you know, it had clearly gone. A bit wrong for her, but the position was so full of tension that it's not easy to not. Oh, F six, nice. We've got to. All right, ah. now what's happening? What's happening? How ooh, did that? Ooh. Where were we? Where were we? Let's get where we were. Oh, that's a nice. Wait, wait, thing, wait, 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 wait. Let's see it. So, Queen G five, we had. Yeah. Ninety four, we had. Yeah. Okay, and so opponent plays knight A four. Okay, which is plausible. Rook D E one. Ah, oh, rook e3 is like also plausible, but quite a big mistake. It's just a tactical blunder because of the, because of exactly what Louise has done, which is right. Great. Okay, f6. So what's this? oh no h4 sorry h4. Okay. Yeah, so the queen needs to stay defending the rook, and rook e3 is a great move positionally. If you had one more tempo, it's the right move to play. It's just that the queen can't move to a safe square, which keeps defending the rook after h4. So h4, nice. So I think if of queen f4 that was the only question in my mind so if queen f4 there must be some nasty move uh what is the nasty move um bishop somewhere presumably. oh wait a minute maybe it's a simple 
nasty move like H5. Possibly just is Queen D Queen D two. Queen D two. Is that simple? Could be. No, it could be, could be, could be. Well the thing is oh it's probably not, but the thing is rook takes f three is just met by queen takes f four, so um mind you that doesn't look super clear because black has knight takes c3 and some counterplay at the end so maybe there's even better than queen d2 oh wait a minute queen it's possible queen c1 does the same queen sort C1. of thing but yeah a less vulnerable square to counter tactics but yeah and the thing is then if rook e8 i guess that amongst other things there's a knight e6 which um breaks the breaks the coordination between the two rooks and therefore wins the exchange under rather good circumstances yeah okay so she's gone queen e7 um and louise now has played f6 and this is a wonderful turnaround it's a uh, very very um so what happens now? if you take queen e1 you take you take the queen yeah if we take queen e1 yeah. we take the queen and otherwise there's a knight fork on f5 which yeah i think black you know i suppose at the point where white played h4, black saw what was going to happen but couldn't do anything about it. But Oh, Rafi's won. Does this mean he has GM? Oh, gosh, it's all happening. Oh, wonderful. It is all happening. Shall we pop there? We're going to that one next. This is also very exciting. This looks devastating yeah. now for white. This is so, Louise, but she only has two and a half minutes left for like... Yeah, but at least she's found h4 and f6. So and her not, yes, only yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, let's Great. go and quickly see Ravi, shall we, maybe? Well, let's see Ravi as well. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, okay. The answer to your question is, I think so. Yes. But okay. I I would need to check 100%, but it would seem almost unbelievable that that doesn't give him 2,500. Oh, fantastic. That Wonderful. What a place to do it as well. Um, okay, so this is this this was Graham Morrison who drew. Let's. Uh, oh, let's, well, that's let's a pity. Ravi. I thought that was well. Was, he was doing very well there. Uh, let's see, Ravi. Yes. Uh, 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 where is it? Here we go. There we are. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Let's see it. Uh, so, where did we get up to with Ravi? Can you, well, we uh, liked what we saw, didn't we? But we did. We're going to just a step get further than we. Um, and we were. We we're putting in moves around about here. So bishop g5. Oh, yeah, bishop d6. Yes, this yeah, was what yeah. we, we were just we discussing were, the merits we of that or off. having another pawn, which I liked this move, I think. Yes. Um, you, did, you, you did. And the other way, but the other way was taking a. The other way was to grab another pawn, but to give white some counterplay. I thought this was probably a pretty good pragmatic yeah. decision, but. Yeah. Uh, queen queen h4, on the other hand. Yeah. Rook f7, seven, I was wondering about rook e8, but okay. Bishop d2. Yeah. I think I would have been. I'm just going to whiz through the, through the moves because, uh, yeah, f4. Okay, so um, so he's so Ravi's pawn up. Remember in this position, yes, and yes. he's getting this f pawn. Well, moving. he's using the weakness of that d pawn in a tactical way now to improve, sort of slightly improve his bishops and his rooks at the same time. So he's. Yes. So he's threatening queen takes d4, and in fact, bishop. Before oh so what so what's happening here? Bishop before he didn't he just took on. Well, he's grabbing another pawn in a in a situation. Well, I guess that. I mean, he takes the knight after. Okay. Yeah. So 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 it is the exchange that White. So White wanted to exchange darks for bishop. He's been going after that, but now Ravi's two pawns up. Well, Ravi's got a little a bit of a version of what we saw before, except that he's got the extra move f four in, which you kind of think there might be circumstances yeah. when that would simply lose back a pawn but if he can keep it then it gives him some counterplay and some activity so can white play bishop f well that, four is, now? that is a good question of course um i suppose you can double up um, well you can certainly play queen d4 then but you know that might not achieve much more than the exchange of queens i'm not sure that's not sure how yeah. good that is. Although it's a, you know, it's an ending. You'd be pretty happy with black from the start of the game, but yeah, I don't know if there was. I don't know if there's another idea here. Is is queen d four? Queen d four. The idea probably all. I guess. Yeah. Probably. I mean, I don't think you want to take on b two and allow some book b one and book takes b seven. No. Sure, you don't want to allow that. But bishop g three, I guess you just. Change the queens and 
and yeah, yeah. of course that's a thankless task for white mm -hmm. not i mean not without some holding chances but pretty grim and miserable mm. so okay so rook c1 white played and oh and then ravi did f3 a bit like louisa's f6 ravi's f3 well that seems a very reasonable f3 to do because i mean you want mm. to be nice to create some counterplay as well as being a pawn up does look nice but... and good to be attacking when you've got the opposite bishop so rook c so and Ravi takes. Yeah. Um Rook takes B seven. So White's I suppose thinking, well I can't be two points. That, look, down. that looks positively reckless. Why doesn't Bishop B five win on the spot? That's the question. Because you're threatening Queen F one check and Rook takes B seven. It seems it's what it's what Ravi That's what he did. I mean that's a really surprising tactical miss from white because it just yeah. seems like there there should be bigger fish frying than the b pawn somehow yeah. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't surprise me that bishop b5 is there and i'm surprised no. if white missed that that's very strange i mean maybe he decided that giving the exchange in the rest in this way is the best practical chance but i i don't think i agree with him on that one <laughs> it doesn't look like it yeah yeah, it's no, I, can't, I, can't see. I mean, if that's a decision, it's an odd decision. And if it's a tactical miss, I don't mean to sound too harsh. It's a bit of an odd tactical miss as well. So anyway, it's delight. It's great news for Ravi. But great for Ravi, yeah, 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 really good. And that was it. That was enough. White had seen enough. Uh, so Ravi wins well, I think the thing is twenty-seven you moves with the black pieces against a twenty-five hundred plus player. Uh, gains his rating points, secures his Grandmaster title, secures a win for England on board four against a, uh, let's face it, a strong Italy team. Um, yeah. So fantastic result for Ravi there. Really nice that's to see. Superb. No, that's great. I mean, it's been pretty clear for a while now that... And chess is difficult, says we'll say. I do agree. GM not, his GM title is a matter of time and probably not very long, but... Obviously, no, but it's nice to get it nonetheless. It's always right? good to get it, yes. No, nice. And it's nice to, I mean, is this, is this his first his first win? His first, his, first yes. so his first win for the England, uh, not yes. senior team, open team. Um, yeah, and, right. uh, yeah. And yeah, he, I mean, he, played, he played well in round, played pretty well in round one, but only drew, I think. And, yeah, he's he looks, he's, he's looking like the informed player that we've, we'll see yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean really strong really strong player yeah, really great nice prospect yeah. for England. so it's, it's it's just really lovely yeah. okay let's see the rest of the team here actually now we're now we're here um and how about david on his birthday let's see david keep missing that's a good reason to see someone if they have a nice position not if they don't yes. oh, he's is it nice nice or not to see oh this might not be nice uh, actually. this is not this doesn't look like we'll see it but we'll move on quickly well we probably have to give it a little bit of it looks like there's some serious time trouble going on as well there is time oh 10 seconds there is time trouble going on and we are white in this position bishop down yeah and the only move oh. that you want the only move you would like to play from a kind of aggressive point of view is probably rook d4 which loses another oh it's mate actually that's mate you can't leave the back rank so no uh, Bishop for three pawns, but um, but, a, but a very very well, we're not queening any of them. Unpleasant initiative for Black, and yeah, they're not. I mean, okay, the D pawn could become a dangerous pawn if yeah. But and is it is it so bad then? Because Black can't take any pawn next. Well, that's true. So D six. Well. Well, I, I think one problem is, I guess that I guess that the fact yeah. that Black's bishop is so nicely placed on f4 and has mating, yeah. all these mating motifs mean you can't oh, really course. move White's rook up the board. So if you play d6, you kind of have to reckon with. Um, mind you, d6 prevents you from um, um, from playing bishop b5 to and coming and attacking the rook because of d7. Yeah. So, okay, I mean, I, I need a moment to I haven't sort of seen the position running up to here i need a moment to yeah i mean at first glance it doesn't look as terrible as the engine says but it does look i mean it is obviously a huge plus for 
it is black, a piece. But white's king is so vulnerable. Yeah, it is a piece, and also black's king can get active, and white's can't because well, white, white black could put that bishop in on g3, which he has done. It looks like, um, and then get the king in. Yes, this is what's happening. Yeah, I, I'm still trying to work out why it wasn't a decent idea for black to at least uh, white to at least attempt d6, but I guess there were good reasons. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Now, it's not very easy place to find moves with white we, when you have no time. Have they got time now? No, they're not yet. No, they haven't. So still... But he has 30 seconds each move. It's, it's another five moves to he get. He has 47 according to the clock, although they're usually yeah. not quite accurate. Yeah. Um. Can I, can we just see the last three moves? Because it's not. Uh, I'm trying to work out why. Yeah. So where were we? We were about there. Yes, and we were discussing d6. Why was d6 so hopeless? And maybe it's not. Maybe it's just. Or maybe look c6. Maybe White didn't want his bishop forced to e7 because kind of rook c6 yeah. forces him to play bishop e7, which does look quite awkward. I mean that might make sense. It's also yeah. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, I maybe mean, it's fine, but it doesn't make that much difference or something like that. Mm, well, it, it prevents the bishop from moving, but maybe the bishop is sort of tacitly tied to um, blockading the pawn anyway. So, yeah, OK, bishop c3 makes sense as well because it restricts black's rook Yeah, and tries to prevent it from coming back. Um, but why was a3 necessary after king g6, I wonder? So bishop c3, king g6. A3. Yeah. Hmm. So I entirely understand that. Do you just not like moving that pawn? Well, I'm not quite sure. I mean, maybe it's just a move, but I'm not quite sure if there's something that White is trying to prevent specifically or if it's just... Yeah. I don't know, the position doesn't look quite as bad to me as the engine says, but... Yeah. Okay. We may, yeah, I don't know. It's tricky. I'm a bit confused by this one. A3. F6. So he gets the bishop in. Yeah. So, again, what, what? why is rook b1 a better move than moving back to d1 again? Does black have a specific idea then? I don't know. I mean, maybe he's, yeah. Hmm. I'm a bit confused. Okay, King G1, Bishop E5. So Bishop E5 seems to be the plan. Yeah. So I Doesn't guess, he, yeah. Yeah, so it's sort of switching from... And... So I suppose now black has a choice between kind of taking with the f pawn with ideas possibly of king f4 and forcing king back to h2 and then, or or taking with the king and simply trying to get the king to do and then I suppose black has to reckon a little bit with whether pushing the h pawn is a oh yeah yeah is a thing that might be tricky um yeah, I quite liked Black's Bishop in there on G3, I have to well, say. Well, it's a, yeah, exactly. All righty. I'm actually keen to look back at Louise's just. Yeah, yeah we were it'd be good to see. Yes. Louise okay. Exploiting her nice tactic. Let's see. Uh, right. I go back. And Louise's. F6, right. F6. Right. We, we've got loads of moves have happened. 
can you you can you see this? I can see it. I'm just slightly worried that her next move has blown up all her advantage. Oh no! But I only have yeah, I only have the okay. So let's see what's going on here. Why why was this so winning after Queen e5 and why is so okay, Queen e5? So Queen e2. The problem is that Black is then able to take on. So what was the what did the engine want? Knight c6. I'm just going to cheat and look. No, don't cheat and look. I, just, I, I have. It was oh, nice. Nice six. Six. Sorry. <laughs> oh, and then, we, yeah, queen. Okay, and then queen c3. Ah, then, of course, we check and we take on g7 and we have a fork on f5 again. That must be the thing. So how's it go, Peter? Knight c6. Six, queen takes c3 and then yeah. knight e7 check. Uh-huh king somewhere one either square allows f takes um, one check and then okay the queen can't take because it's overloaded the king takes it would be queen takes c3 and then winning an entire rook because of the four on c3 takes and here that's not a happy yep. thing and king takes g7 allows the fork on f5 again very much as it did before yeah. the, even more horrific version, probably. Oh wait, there's a key point, really key point there, actually. And yeah, that after knight f five check king somewhere, I think it's crucial to the combination and possibly something that Louise could reasonably miss that the knight on e three defends the queen on c two. Oh yeah, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. there's actually no way of doing it because um, takes on c three. You can't, you can't calculate all that with one minute left. Well, you can, but you can also miss it. So, I mean, yeah. you know, you might calculate that, but there's no guarantees. That's the problem with yeah. having one minute left. So, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, that's an interesting. I mean, it's sort of clear that when White plays f six, that something is good. Good is happening that shouldn't have been happening from what went before, but. It's very easy to go wrong, as you said, when she has so little time. So I hadn't realised that the crucial line was quite so intricate. Yeah. Okay, so okay, Queen E5. So unfortunately, after Queen D2, Black is going to get away with this again because now oh, she can safely take, take on F6, I think. Takes. Queen takes F6. Yeah. G3. G3, well, that sort of... You can see why she wants to relocate the bishop, but it also momentarily weakens the bishop and the knight yes. is coming round to so knight c5 coming to its d3 square again this is a real shame i think this is going all wrong bishop d1 it's going wrong but it was looking yeah it was yeah looking it was looking the tricky and then louise did a fantastic save and then it's now looking tricky again rook e3 and then well now the knight's being undermined which is a horrible detail b4 b4 so if rook f Three, then she gets well. She gets time anyway to take on c three if she wants to. But queen e five is a good move too. Oh, she played rook f three. Sorry. Yeah, this all happened. Yeah, this all happened. Um, knight c six. And now, well, knight c six doesn't look very good, but I think there is no good move because the knight's being undermined, and and when it when it gets undermined, it's then pinned. And yeah, no, this is a real shame. This is. So it takes 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 here. Yeah. This is, yeah, yeah, and it's all collapsing. And okay, two. Oh. Okay, well, um, any knight move allows mate in one, apart from ninety five. So. Okay, come on, um, black. Let's keep. Let's keep. Come on, black. <laughs> you can't, you can't cross you know your fingers you for allowing a mate in one. That's too mean. Come on, black. Unfortunately, white isn't threatening bishop takes d3 because of rook a1 check. That's also important, I think. Yeah. Otherwise, that would be... Yeah. All right. How's, how's the rest of the games going in this match? Oh, wait a minute. So, Oh, yeah, no. Can I just say one? It's rather yeah. annoying here that with the position with the rook on e3, so before her last move, yeah, she couldn't try to trick black with knight b4 because then the bishop covers rook e8. So there wasn't an attempt to deflect the knight and allow rookie eight mate because uh, at the point where you deflect it, uh, yeah, yeah. Is then so this move, a bit annoying. Yeah. So she didn't have any, that you know, covers, an attempt, yeah. an attempt no to trick. trick, which would otherwise have been a good trick because in time trouble it's annoying. Yes. Yeah, but yeah, no, yeah. no way. Okay, that's a shame. Yeah, it's, that one's gone. I'm afraid, and it had real um, gone, and it was really moment. good. Yeah, assuming okay. black hasn't just lost on time, it's gone. Okay.
So and the others. Um, oh, and uh, so, oh, Kat has lost. Kat has lost. I think it's actually actually is now looking like three and a half after Slovenia. Oh dear. Um, okay. But we were looking good on several of those ones. So there we were. Zoe's. Is there any hope, or is it? Let's see, Zoe. Look very promising. See, Let's just run to the that end. was where we got to. Let's just see what it's looking like now. Oh, no, it doesn't look good. No, that is no. it. No, it it's look, I don't many, even want to count the pawns. It's not too good. many yeah. pawns. Too many pawns. Okay. Um, shall we hop across back to the open event? Yeah. Let's, Let's do that. There we go. Oh, yeah. David is looking like this one still. Should we check? Um, let's we check. just remind people of the match situation here because David yes, is the only game left. I think this yeah. one we need to draw to win the match. Yeah, so we've had two draws. Yes, two um, draws on one and two, Mickey and Gawain. Yep. Um, and then we saw this, this lovely win by Ravi. Um, on board four, so we're two one up with just. Can you just game. remind me of Gawain's game? I'm sort of slightly worried. Yeah, let's have a look at, at it. Gawain's we didn't. Did we? we saw the start, but we didn't see. Oh, that's yeah. right. We only saw it up to here, so we've seen only a little. Yeah, should we flick through? Yeah. Yeah, let's have a quick look. Okay, I'm going to just uh, flip it so we have Gawain here. So White did play D4. No, White didn't play D4. No, Sorry, no, that was, that was, White that was, was startled. Oh, okay. I mean, nice. I kind of decided that if White didn't like the look of D4, then they might just castle and try to, you know, bail out in the way that I guess we might be about to see. Yeah. But I think I, I underestimated White's fighting spirit since E takes D3 doesn't get answered by a capture, so it can't really be called a bailout. Okay. So this isn't recaptured, yeah, okay. Yeah, these guys are playing quite sharply, aren't they? And then we get five. Okay. And be here five. Wow. That pawn's got a long way. Mike Queen, one step I think, away. Well, I think the point is that knight is coming. I think it. this, you know, if rook d2 just won the pawn, this would all look somewhat loose by black, I think. But knight e4... Um, is presumably the idea, but I guess now there's going to be some exchanges. Does white play bishop c2? Yeah, and there's going to be some exchanges, and, you know, assuming the pawn is not queening, it doesn't look so bad for white, because if you round it up, then... But what black has in all of these systems is a bishop on b6 kind of trained on the f2 square, which always guarantees some, yeah. some kind of counterplay, whatever else is going on, I think. Although black, white... Sorry, white having played knight c4, that kind of neutralizes that a bit, and probably it now might become yeah, terribly exciting, agree. actually. Yeah, so this is the most kind of equal and relatively lifeless position we've seen, I think. I agree to draw here. Yeah, no, fair enough. I mean, you know. <coughs> Visually, it looks slightly nicer for black because that queen is active and the b-pawn is a bit weak. But I think white has decent squares for the queen, which white can play without losing the <laughs> b-pawn. And then, you know, yeah. it's very difficult for black to actually attempt anything without relocating the queen anyway. So, yeah, this looks very, very equal. OK, should we have a look at Ireland? Yes, let's do that. So I think they were the next boards from England, if I'm remembering right. Here we go. Oh, yes. Oh, not so. It looks a bit tough. Well, um, <laughs> tough Tyron again. Has, 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 match, has sort of Ireland. made yeah. another very, very decent result, hasn't he? But, but Taran, Taran's got a draw yeah. on board one. Um, and let's just see what the opening was. Uh, in a Sicilian. In a Rossolimo, eh? Yeah, Rossolimo with E6. Yeah, bit of a yeah. I've played a few Rossellimos with E6. Most of them, they can be quite fun sometimes. Mm. And they, this one just turned into something that looks a bit like an open Sicilian. But then, 
both sides sort of have made slight concessions because you wonder what the white bishop's doing on b5 in the Sicilian and black sort of makes one or two on knight e7 to g6 and things as well, which looks slightly unusual. But I think basically those lines are usually not too bad for black. And we have, a, yeah, it's a perpetual check actually, isn't it? It's white. Mm. Yeah. White's knight is would otherwise be in a lot of trouble. So white bails out with a perpetual check, I think. Very sensibly, yeah. Well, it's not a pure perpetual. What black could probably escape by giving up? A, no, he would have to give up a rook. No, it's a proper perpetual. Okay. Okay. Yeah, white's all. H4, Wales. D8, F6. It's all. Oh, Wales are in the lead against oh, Albania. One, one and a half. Against up, Albania, so. yeah. Yes. Um, Albania with um, four players above only 300. And our Welsh player, our top board is 2296. So we're. we're Highly or Wales is outrated. Excellent. Uh, let's yeah. see. Let's see the bottom board there because it's looking like we our uh, Wales had a win on one, draw on two. I'm a bit um, worried if it's giving if it's not giving any assessment. It might could that mean that board, something's wrong? With, something's gone wrong with the. Uh, they might have gone wrong with it. Okay, okay. So we can't see this board. Okay. Um. So that win on one for Gregor Toxic. Um, that's again. a nice little that's a nice finish because uh, so bishop takes gets mated to rook e8 and king takes to queen f7 to h7 that's kind of yeah so bishop take rook here did you say rook e8 oh I yeah. see wait a minute there's a there's a I hadn't even noticed bishop um, f8 was legal so maybe I should rethink that maybe that's not even the thing uh Well, you can see that Black's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, yeah. I anyway, mean, at least, I mean, at least, even if at least, worst, at least you're winning that rook. So <laughs> worst case scenario, you're winning the rook. But yeah, I yeah. thought it was immediate mate. But okay, no, it probably is. I, I it's going to be. I wouldn't be quick. surprised. Yeah. Oh well, there's yeah, there might actually. There's rook. immediate rook win with them. Um, so you go here, 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 and then you can do that fork if you want. You can, I suspect in in in. I suspect there's something better. Well, there yeah. might also be, there might also be Queen D8, Bishop F8, G7, winning sort of some massive attack yeah. <laughs> with Rook G2. But I, I think yeah, any of these any of these yeah. are going to be good enough, aren't they? Because the King well is well done to him. King's going to yeah. have a check or two, but nothing worse. No, that's good. That's good stuff. Yes, and Ord two was. Um, yeah, it's a very good result for Alan Pleasant. And Pleasance as well against uh, 2,500 player. I, I am Lambi Pasco. Yep. Um, it um, looks like uh, only the rating difference probably. Yeah. Encouraged. Oh, that's interesting. Tim Kett was in the team originally. I don't know okay. what's happened there. Oh, so maybe, maybe. Um, Board four didn't get played at all. I don't know. No, no, Tim Kett's not in the talk. I think he means originally before the event. Okay. Um, I don't think. No, Tim Kett isn't there. I'm pretty certain. Is Nigel Davis registered with Wales these days? I thought he was. Um. Uh, yeah. Yes, I believe so. We don't know how John's doing. Yeah. Okay. But it's looking like it could be a very, very nice result for Wales, depending on how the other. Well, board That's three good. didn't seem to be going well, but obviously we can't really yeah, know what's well. gone on on board four because there's no transmission. No. So. Yeah. It's strange. Okay. So just and check what about Scotland? Scotland? Scotland. Um, so far, one and a half half to Kosovo. Um, Andrew, Andrew Muir, Muir looks... Oh, that's a, it's a quite interesting rook ending. Probably. Andrew Muir, interesting rook ending. Okay. Um, Andrew Muir is playing black here. Oh, look at those pawns! Yeah. Well, I mean, it's interesting. Oh. So black, black but can't wait, wait. It's got to take this. Black can't. Yeah, black can't. Um, oh, I see. Look at F three is actually dropping. So if F three drops, then E four and A four drop, and then it should be reasonably easily drawn. Um. But I mean, if White doesn't take on f3, then White always has to watch out for rook h4. Sort of, if if he's no longer attacking f3, rook h4 wins immediately for Black. So White can't sort of go wandering off with rook no. and doing other exciting things. It's 
probably the main point. Yeah. Um, so where should black go with the king here? That's an interesting question. What if just king... Okay, so the question is, do you defend this? You, I mean... No, I'd be delighted if white put that. I'm going to go king... I think I'm going king e5. e5. I'm wondering about rook e6, check whether that's... Um, no, I don't... Well, I mean, rook e6, check king d4. Then white has to defend against rook h4 again. Yeah. So and probably if, white just has to take. Yeah, and when white takes, you just probably play king e4 now. Yeah. But okay, then you need to... Yeah, then king e4 and then, I guess, rook somewhere that hits the b-pawn. King takes d5. It's it's still going to be a draw, isn't it? But there's, yeah. Yeah. there may be... Yeah, the only way white can lose, I think, is by forgetting that he has to take the f-pawn. And, <laughs> and that seems rather unlikely, but it does look very unlikely that black should be in any trouble either. So, Yeah. Board one for Scotland. Let's just check. This one probably wasn't... Oh, that one's... It's gone. Already gone, yeah. It's, it's gone. gone. Let's yeah. just see. Yeah. Um, oh dear, that's quite a lot of material. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good player, Alan Tate. He seems to be struggling a little bit to find his form here. But well, he was up against someone like twenty four eighty six. So... No, but I think he's a good enough player. You know, he's twenty three forty. He, yeah. He's used to dealing with these guys as well. I think, but yeah. Um, yeah. Any, that's a shame. That's a shame because I think, yeah, hopefully he will find his feet at some point. Yeah. I mean, it's. I think everybody, almost everybody, finds it more difficult to play chess for their country than they do in individual yeah. tournaments. I mean, there may be a few people. Matthew, Matthew's probably one of the few people who sort yeah. of obviously relished it in some ways. And, yes, yes. And didn't, you know, Matthew Sadler is one Whoever of the few players who's played yeah. noticeably better for his country than he does. Other, I think, you know, around about the time of Pula, I think it's safe to say that he was playing even better for his country than than he was in individual tournaments. But I think it's quite a rare, quite a rare beast in that respect. Yeah. And was quite a beast in Pula. <laughs> yeah. OK. Um, shall we go and see how David's? Let's check David's and on. then we will wind up. OK. So... David, here we go. Uh, I'll flip it around for us. Yeah, it looks like White's going to be a little bit running out of moves because, um, you know, advancing the H form will almost certainly lose it. Unless, you know, you can find some H5, King G5, Rook H1 moment. But I think that's ultimately going to lose it and meanwhile it's difficult to move the rook with you know to move the rook without losing the b pawn so it looks to me like he's somewhat running out of moves mm. um but if there's a way of making it tricky i have confidence he will for sure. Well, I've just seen something in actually after h5, king g5, rook h1. I think black can probably play. I wonder if black can play f5 because h6 would then lose would lose to h4 check, and then we could sort of take the take the h pawn at our leisure under much better circumstances because the king has to go back to h2. So here, and then f4 check, and that's not a lot of fun. Yeah. And take king takes h6. Whereas, you know, if 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 you had to play king h6 in order to blockade the h pawn, then life wouldn't be so easy for white, perhaps. Sorry for black. I mean, but that that anyway that that looks uh, quite an annoying variation. So I yeah. think it's difficult to see what he can play here. Yes, looks like they've both made um, time control. Okay, that's something. Um, well, it's something. Although you know, if black was running short yeah. of time too, obviously when you're losing. It's quite yeah, good yeah. not to reach time control because you want to randomise as much as possible. But, um, yeah. Okay, that's a shame. Should right. we just very quickly see what's happening on the top boards of the tournament? Just see what... Yes. Let's I mean, I know the two teams who had the most game points were Azerbaijan and Hungary, I believe. So they are right up there at the top. Okay. So, he, so Spain and Russia was two all. Yeah. Um, so Azerbaijan... 
against Germany is one and a half half okay. at the moment. That's Germany are pretty. Oh, there is Nisi Piano, who I, I think I, I said Romanian grandmaster. He's of course formerly Romanian, yeah. now German grandmaster. Yeah. Yes. Um, yep. And Hungary, France. Um, Hungary two and a half half. Hungary have had a habit of recent years. Yeah. They've been looking very good in team tournaments for some time now. I mean, I remember a time when they used to sort of quite often underperform a bit compared with seeding. But some of these younger Hungarian teams. Mm. Have, I mean, and also actually before that, they, I mean, obviously they did extremely well in one Olympiad when they still had Judith Polgar and Almashi and players like that. Yeah. And Leiko. Um, you know, they 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 no longer have been underperforming. They're looking really impressive and they're looking impressive here as well. Yeah. So he, the question is, can Ferruja pull one back for France? Um, um, it won't so be enough to win the match, um, but it will make it. He could get it to two and a half, one and a half if yes. he can't win. Um, Erdős, by the way, is one of the most solid players. He has oh, <laughs> in really? time been one. Of, I mean, he was one of those players who used to be put, you know, even when he was many rating points behind some of the others. He tended to be put on board one because he was extremely, you know, he had a very high draw rate. He was incredibly hard to beat for a while. I remember in the Bundesliga, he was playing high and proving almost unbeatable sometimes yeah yeah but i think he's i think this is probably quite unpleasant for white because the deep horn looks so weak and okay he can for the moment white can counter-attack against that f born but and you know black's king probably has the capacity to come over and cover that f form king d8 is that what he's just played yeah there you go it has the capacity to drive i mean White can hold the rook there by playing rook b8 check, but then the king comes to e7 defending the f-pawn, and that d-pawn looks pretty weak. I mean, I'm not saying that white is definitely losing, maybe, but the h-pawn doesn't look ferocious. Mm. <laughs> Difficult for an h-pawn to look ferocious, but it sort of doesn't look that scary. I think, I think white is in quite a lot of trouble here, probably. You know, if the rook on b, if the rook's stuck on b8 defending the bishop, then black can play king e7, and black's rook can move away, and white still can't hassle the king yeah. because it's needed to defend the bishop. So, just looks very awkward for for white to me. Um, you could check the engine and see whether it just refutes everything I said, but mm -hmm. it may not. Yeah, I think this is pretty good for black. Maybe All right. Some... I think we will wind no, up. It, it's partially them. refuted what I said. It, yep. it is only a bit better for black. <laughs> I thought it was much worse than that. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Good. So, so it's looking like the open team, England open team, uh, will draw today unless David can pull a bit of a miracle out of the fire. Yeah. Um, the women's team. We'll lose the match, it looks like. Um, they had real chances today, didn't they? They, had they did have real chances yeah, yeah. In, um, in, in, I think, in all the all the games they had a good position. So, um, yeah, so good luck to everybody tomorrow. We're not on tomorrow, but we're back on Tuesday. So look forward to seeing you all then. Good luck to England tomorrow and uh, yeah, see you Tuesday. Thanks all very Thanks much. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers. Thanks.